Hello. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. It's all cut out. Um, Frederick straight in there. St pow! Didn't mess about. Hello, Frederick. Thanks for joining, mate. It's always good to uh, hear from you. Welcome, guys. This is my channel, Bit Glen. My name's Glen, and this is my cryptocurrency journey. And I'm trying to vlog my cryptocurrency journey and what I learn uh, from day to day, really. And obviously, sharing that with you guys. So I hope you appreciate this style of content. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. And you can also click the subscribe button if you're new to this channel. So I welcome you if you're new to this channel. Today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. Is it, uh, is it a bargain at 5k before it hits 35k? Mm. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, but I just want to say thank you to obviously everyone in Team BitGlen, uh, everyone in the team group chat, which is the Telegram. Uh, chat that we have you can join this telegram group chat if you want there's a little link uh, in my description down below uh, just click on that link and follow it um, and there's a few of us as you can see here uh, and we sort of share articles and news stories that interest us every day so uh, thank big shout out to team bit glenn in the group chat uh, bp says happy friday glenn <laughs> that's a it's a reason to celebrate. It's Friday. No World Cup today, which is a bit of a shame. But England had the most boring game yesterday. That's why I didn't do a video. I actually fell asleep. Ugh. But at least we got the easier stages now. Apparently, we're playing Colombia and then the winner of Sweden, Switzerland. So maybe it'll be a good thing in the long run. So... Today, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin at 5K. Now, there's been a lot of uh, people making shouts about Bitcoin going down. Um, obviously, a lot of people said, oh, if it dips below 6K, it'll probably drop down to 5.8. Obviously, Tony Vey, as I showed you guys uh, probably about four or five days ago, he sort of called a little while back for Bitcoin going down to about 5.3. At some point, um, we also had, um, we also had, I can't remember his full name, but on CNBC Fast Money, uh, he talks about um, Bitcoin dipping to about five two five. Oh, here we go. This guy here. Oh. Africa's crypto trader Rand, welcome back. Good to see you. And so good to essentially, be he uh, made a Is call it 5, for... 5,900, as I called it the last time 50, I was here. Yeah, yeah 5,900, which he was spot on, to be fair. I mean, you can't knock him for that. I don't know how to... There we go. Um, so, yeah, he called for that. And now he's saying that if it drops below 5,8, which it did today, um, then it would be heading down to its next support levels of about 5,300, I think, something like that, he said. So um, there seems to be quite a uh, overall agree <laughs> agreement that it looks like if uh, Bitcoin is heading down towards the 5K mark or just above. Now, don't take this as fin <laughs> financial advice. Um, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Um, Obviously, these are just views of other YouTube celebrities and uh, celebrities, YouTube personalities <laughs> and people in the media. Obviously, that's what they're all sort of calling for. Will that happen? I don't know. But the overall trend of Bitcoin, without being too negative, is obviously uh, on a decline. Um, let's go over to... Let's go over to Coin Market Cap, and I was just watching a video. Actually, you can see here at currently it's worth five thousand nine hundred eight. Um, if we look at the last, let's do one year. Um, we've got the price of Bitcoin there, obviously hitting its peak of. Actually, can I make it six months? So you can see here, this is our peak that we had at the end of last year. And you can see there that generally Bitcoin is in a continuous decline, um, which obviously now we're at sort of just below 6K. 
Now, if this continues, people are saying that they reckon it will sort of bottom out about 5K. Some people are calling for lower than that. Some people are saying 3K and 2K and 1K. Um, I actually said that I don't think Bitcoin will go below 6K. Uh, I remember I said that a few months ago, so I'm pointing out that I was wrong. Um, so yeah, it, it's a tough one to call because we never know what the bottom's going to be. If everyone starts cashing out, then obviously the price dips and suffers for that. And then everyone else thinks, oh shit, it's dropping faster than I thought. I better get out as well. So then there's a snowball effect of everyone trying to get out. Um, but that's what we've seen recently, just continuous decline in the price of Bitcoin. Is this a correction? Now, I was watching uh, this video here, which is a really good video, actually. He's done a few of them now. He does like animation. Oh, I've lost it now. God damn it. Uh, where did I get it from? I actually got it from a Telegram group chat called What's on Crypto. There we go. Hey, what is going on, guys? In this cryptocurrency market, downside wallet level around $213 per coin. I recommend that you go and watch this video. It's, it's um, he, he's names. At, I don't know if I can actually uh, actually bring up his full YouTube channel. So I like to give him props because right, he's that done lean some really good videos. Look that girls go Aim stone. Crazy for you know that Hollywood look like you see. Yeah, shut up. You hey, bro. what is going on, guys? In this cryptic. So he was just pointing out in this video that. Um, We've always had these massive spikes. So you can see here Bitcoin being worth six cent. God, why didn't I get it then? Six cent per coin. And you can see here this massive spike. Now, if you actually took away the prices, if I actually covered up the prices at the end, and obviously he's highlighting the prices, this looks exactly like the uh, November, December spike. And then obviously where we're at today. So you can see this continuous decline in price. But then it always tends to um, finish, uh, like the bottom of it seems to hit higher than where it was at before. So, you know, it was at six cent. Now it's at, um, I think it is, it's $30. There you go, $30. But the party didn't last a while. Just a few months later... And then he demonstrates here that um, obviously there's a massive decline back down to $2. Now you could say, well, Glenn, that's really shit. You know, what about the people that bought in at $30? And I agree, um, you know, that's a really shit thing. If you bought a $30, say you put 10 grand into it, your money's now going to be worth not even 10%, like, well, 93%. So you'd have 7% uh, left in your equity. So it is shit in that respect, but if you can time these, uh, you know, these um, declines and peaks sort of perfectly, not perfect, not even perfect, but if you got close, so say you bought a six cent and you was to sell at $20, you know, that is a decent profit margin, do you know what I mean? And, you know, then you can sit back and say, um, you know, Okay, it's dropped, but I don't care. I'll wait and then obviously buy back in at two dollars. Now, the trouble is, is that when it's going up, so when you're say at this point here, as I was uh, where I joined in, and probably where a lot of you joined in, I, I seem to notice that a lot of people got into crypto around the time that it was spiking in price. So, you know, it's. Um, Back in November, when I got involved towards the end of October, I think it was about five to six thousand dollars, and that's when I thought I really need to get involved in this. And then obviously I did my research and learned a lot more about crypto, and I thought, yeah, actually I can see this being a thing of the future. Obviously, the price was going up and up and up and up, and I thought, oh my god, this is never gonna end. It's just gonna keep going up, and I'm gonna be a genius to all my friends because they're gonna say, Oh, Glenn got involved in Bitcoin. But obviously, I joined in at sort of this point here. Obviously, it spiked up to twenty thousand. Um, I didn't cash out because I thought, you know, oh, this is going to 30k. Um and then obviously it just dropped and dropped and dropped uh, to where we're at now. 
So, and I, I didn't have a lot invested. Obviously, I put all, as you guys know, I put a lot of my money into mining Bitcoin, cloud mining, which hasn't really paid off for me, really. So, what have I learned going forward and what should you look out for? I personally, if I ever see anything like this again, <laughs> so what would it have to be if that was to happen, say, again now? Bitcoin being worth 5k or say 5.5 to 6k, but then it started to increase. I would start to look to sell some of my Bitcoin off at sort of probably double of the price. So I'd say at 10k um, and then again at 15k. Um, so really, every time there's like another X, 1x, 2x, 3x, I would try and sell some off. Um, but yeah, as soon as it started to get around a price where I think, you know, this is too much, it, we can't sustain this. So when you start looking at new all-time highs, I mean, if we get anywhere over 20K, I'll be cashing everything out, everything. Um, and even if it went up to 35, 40K, I'd wait a month, two months. That's whether I have the willpower to do that. And then obviously wait for this to happen. And then I would buy back in again. That's what I would like to think I would do. I would also give it sort of three to four months. Because again, in this video, and I know I'll probably, I'm only using this video because that's what came up in my news feed today. But obviously I've gone through with you guys in the past. We've looked at these spikes and how similar they are. Um, and I think I went through each uh, sort of time period of when this happened. I think there's about five or six of them over the course of the last um, seven years, there's about five or six of these exact same spikes, like exactly the same. It's uncanny. They're, it's it's almost like someone's just copy and paste, copy and paste. The only downside is that when you get to this uh, bottom here, this, you know, he's put marked here $2, there's normally a long period between here and this happening again. Um, normally sort of a year and a half to two years so let's carry on watching this video and see where it starts to increase again just to show you an example so this is uh, May 2011 when the price went from six cent to thirty dollars and then dropped back down to two dollars again so the next one was for the most part consistently stable for quite some time no crazy swings which is September 2012, so that was about a year after we saw that first spike, I believe. Uh, September 2011 is when the bottom hit, so literally a year later. Now, we're actually six months into this bear market, so potentially we've only got six months to obviously gain, uh, you know, if it was to be an exact copy of something like that. But some of them have lasted sort of two years. Now, this one's interesting. Yet again, this looks exactly the same as where we're at since uh, November, December time. You see this massive spike hits an all-time high and then drops back down. And over a few months, you see the price go back down. So uh, this one is in 2013. Again, March, May time. That hasn't happened this year. <laughs> Maybe next May. So it drops back down to $60 on average with a bit of volatility. Now, the point that uh, I'll sort of skip ahead, the point that he makes in this video, he takes all the average um, increases and declines and he says that on average, Bitcoin, once it hits an all-time high, like its peak, like these, uh, it generally drops, on average, 76%. That's on average. The first one was 93%. The others were 72%. Um, so on average, it's 90, uh, 76% decline. So you can see here, Bitcoin hitting $1,000, and then it dropped back down to 300 Um Again, it shows you seventy-two dollars. So we'll fast forward this now, and this is this is obviously the one where we all jumped in. Uh, you can see here it looks almost the same. I mean, this is more zoomed in, but zoomed out, obviously that looks pretty similar to the first couple that we saw. Um, but now it's obviously at 
all time high 19,000 back down to 6k. Again, a drop of uh, currently 68%, but he's saying if it goes down to 5k, it'll be about 76% where the others are. Um, so that's the average. You can see here, they're the four averages of when we've had these big spikes. So for me, like I say, I, I would be now looking at Bitcoin if it was to go up dramatically in price. I'd be looking to cash out uh, once it got sort of uh, past the all time high of 20K. You would expect that it would go past the all time high. So 25K, maybe 30K. Um, but then obviously we're going to have this massive drop off. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and avoid. Um, Baby London says, hey, Big Glenn, team, Big Glenn. Tony Nichol says, hey. Russell says, hi, Glenn, was sorting out the kids. Good, get them to bed. It's quarter past eight, Russell. What are you doing? Um, mine are still up, I think. My wife's sorting them out. She's watching Love Island. So, yeah, we're, we're currently in this position here. Now, obviously, really, I didn't need to go through that whole story, I suppose, because we all know what's happened with Bitcoin and we've followed it several times. I've covered it a few times on this channel, actually. So, like I say, in the future, what's the best buying advice? Um, obviously, I can't predict when the price is going to go up, how much it's going to go up by, when it's going to drop down, and how much by. But all I would be looking at is how much. Uh, how much I'm willing to cash out my Bitcoin for at the time and how much obviously I'm willing to wait or how long I'm willing to wait to buy back in. And those are the things you need to really get your head around. And it sounds really simple. It does. But it's fucking hard. Like, it's really hard. When you see something going up in price, and just for argument's sake, um, I just wanted to show here... I actually, I'm going to share an image of my block folio from yesterday, a uh, couple of days ago. Now, I'll share it in the Telegram group chat so it pops up on the computer. Lovely. So let's see if that pops up. <clears throat> now, this is this is my block folio as of as of as of as of a couple of days ago. You can see here I've had a right good clear out. I've got rid of most of the uh, altcoins that I had. Um, I was going to sell Bitcoin and Signal as I explained the other day, but I can't access Bittrex, which I think accepts both of these. Unless I set up a new account with someone else, um, I just thought, oh, sod it, leave it. I've got a little bit of Ethereum because I needed it for my for wallet when I wanted to move things like this about. <coughs> and I kept my Binance coins just in case I do want to start. Um... <laughs> Russell says, fuck Glenn. Um... <coughs> <coughs> so, you can see here that. With my Bitcoin, I had exactly, I typed in the exact amount that I had. I had 0 0.12405654. Now, what I'd done was, obviously, everyone was talking about Bitcoin dropping down to 5K and 5.3. Um, so, at the time, it was at 6,180, I think, when I cashed out. Um, so, that's what I'd done. And, obviously, Bitcoin's gone down a bit. I saw it dip. And then it started to increase in value and I thought, oh, maybe it's on the way up. Now I bought back in. So now I've got 0 0.12667036. So I've accumulated more Bitcoin in the last 24 to 48 hours. Let's get that exact number up again. Uh, 124. So I've actually gained 0 0.00. Two six two two six two Bitcoin. Um, sorry, zero point zero zero two six two. So I've accumulated more Bitcoin now. Obviously, as you guys know, obviously I've been involved in cloud mining. Hash flares not paying out. I don't think any 
that the mining services are paying out at the moment. Uh, a lot of machines, I believe, are being switched off because they're actually unprofitable at the moment because the cost of um, electricity is outweighs the how much you can mine. So I thought, well, maybe this is a way of time that I can use while I've got free time to be able to check the price quite regularly um, to try and do a little bit of, I don't know, swing trading, if you like, um, just trying to accumulate more Bitcoin. Obviously, I know at some point I'm going to lose some, but as long as obviously I don't dip below this level that I had, the 0 0.124, um, then obviously anything I have over that, it was worth it. It was worth it rather than just hodling. That's that's my opinion. You may hate me for saying that. You may agree with me. Please comment or join the group chat. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, so what I'm looking for now is obviously price of Bitcoin to go up um, to around between sort of six one again, and then I'll cash out again. Um, and then obviously wait for it to drop back down. Normally Sunday uh, is a dipping day and sort of Monday morning as well. So I'll be keeping a close eye on getting back in uh, those sort of time. And then obviously doing the same again until we can uh, hopefully hit a bottom of sort of around 5k. Now it's not just me thinking this. You may think, Glenn, you're an absolute idiot, uh, as I'm sure many of you probably do think that. Um, a lot of people are saying that Bitcoin at 5K is a bargain. Hey, everyone likes a bargain. Chief Economic Advisor at Financial Services Company Alliance, Mohammed El Iran, told CNBC today, June 29th, that he thinks Bitcoin will eventually be treated as a store of value and that he would consider a buying at the price of $5,000. While Iran reported currently not owning any Bitcoin, the influential econ economist said he would consider buying at $5,000 price point, explaining that his reasoning as being based on a gut feeling. El Iran demissed Bitcoin's skyrocketing prices in late 2017 as pure speculation fueled by people jumping in on the crypto bandwagon, adding that, I don't think you'll get all the way back to 20 k but I do think you need to establish a base where people who are who really believe in the future of Bitcoin consolidate and even that provides you a lift. El Iran went on to say that while he believes that cryptocurrencies will have a longevity, they will take a different form to what they are today. I sort of agree with him on those notes. Uh, I do think we'll see a new all time high. Um, I don't think that was it for Bitcoin. Just because we've seen it happen so many times, um, it would be very unlikely, or it, it would be very uh, odd, if you like, if Bitcoin, with the scarcity of it and the fact that no one still managed to hack the damn thing, um, obviously it still has the most mining power, it's still used as traded against all other cryptocurrencies and ICOs. It's it seems to me very unlikely that it's it's not going to get back up to those sort of levels. It, to me, it's just, I, I can't, I mean, 5,000 to me is still a lot for a digital code. Uh, it's still a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, if he was involved at the beginning, six cent, you probably thought $30 was a lot of money for a silly uh, digital uh, cryptocurrency but obviously now we're talking about oh 5k oh that's really shit <laughs> but really it's still quite a lot of money but i don't agree with him about the 20k i honestly believe that we will sort of hit uh, 25k maybe a bit above um, at some point probably within the next i'm gonna say year from now um maybe before christmas again this year that's in six months time if not i think it'll probably be May, March time next year. Sorry. Um, I suspect that if you uh, look 10 to 15 years down the road, we will have digital currencies, but the public sector will have involvement in that and it will not be pure Bitcoin. But the blockchain technology, take that seriously. Now, I'm not sure what he's implying here. I'm not sure if he's saying that there will be other 
versions of Bitcoin that are going to be made by the people for the people. I, I don't know because surely that is what Bitcoin is. Um, I'm not. I'm not too sure what he means by that. I think any cryptocurrency that's created by any sort of government uh, is not going to go down too well, just because the whole ethos of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency was that it was self, self-managed, self-regulated. It's it's a system that you haven't got to worry about trusting anyone. Whereas at the minute we have to trust PayPal. We have to trust the banks we have to trust visa and mastercard we have to trust these big ceos that are earning you know five million pounds a year bonuses um i don't know why the rest of us obviously that are putting into that system receive nothing back so i think that's the whole premise of cryptocurrency um you you get what you put into it but i don't know what do you guys think <clears throat> so um yeah he's he's looking at obviously getting involved once bitcoin hits about 5k now does this mean that we're going to see as soon as bitcoin hits 5k uh we're going to see a steady increase in the price because everyone will feel that it's a bargain obviously the miners are saying it's not profitable at these prices um there's stories about people like warren buffett and uh Who's the other one? Bill Gates, all getting ready to buy into Bitcoin. I'm sure they've got some sort of accounts, even if they don't personally know it. They probably employ someone that uh, buys and sells these sort of things for them. So I don't know, but we'll see maybe a big influx of money coming in once people think actually Bitcoin's a bargain at the minute. It was 20K, now it's 5K. We better jump in. And that's the sort of mindset, obviously, that I've got. Uh, BBL says, not me mining 24-7. Good on you, boy. Keep going. I like your enthusiasm. Keep it, keep it up. Russell says, we have no global averages on Bitcoin price, albeit aside from the price in region or country. So all this with the mining is significant. That is true, actually. Uh, obviously, as my video showed, I don't know if any of you watched it, the um, how much does it cost to mine Bitcoin. Uh, depending on whether you get three cent uh, electricity per kilowatt hour or if you pay 18 cent per kilowatt hour, um, you, the, the results were very dramatic. So you, you're talking over, over the course of... Um, a year or over four years it was no was it a year it was over four years i think it cost you about eight thousand three hundred us dollar uh to mine one bitcoin but if you got three cent per kilowatt hour depending on what country and on what tariffs you're on and how close you are to like a solar panel farm uh, it would only cost you about two thousand dollars to mine a Bitcoin. So even at these prices of 5k, there are still people mining out there where it is profitable to do so. Um, and I say fair play to them. Uh, someone's got a strength from the system. We need people mining, otherwise the system will probably come to a collapse. Um, so we'll see. Uh, BBL says, but Glenn, do you have time to constantly watch the market for swing trading? No, I don't actually. I actually rely on, obviously, I've actually set, if you have a look uh, on this picture, BBL, I've actually set reminders on my phone now. So when the price of Bitcoin goes up, a little notification pops up on my phone. If the price goes below a certain point, again, a notification comes up on my phone. I do check it probably... I would say once an hour, maybe once every couple of hours. If I'm out with friends or going for a meal, then obviously I don't check it for maybe a whole evening, half a day. Uh, but just I always keep my eye on it uh, quite regularly. Um, and obviously with GDAX, it's so, it's so fast to change between one or the other. Um, and so cheap, really. Um, I think I did a £570... Uh, trade and it cost me one dollar in fees um let's have a look see how much this will cost me to sell the bitcoin yeah one pound seventy so it's quite cheap it's quite fast 
Uh, obviously, I can access it on my phone. Whereas places like Binance and all those, those are generally slower, harder to use, and not iPhone friendly. <laughs> so with GDAX being so easy, or Coinbase Pro as it's now called, um, I can do this on the go whenever. So yeah, it gives me more of a chance, I suppose. Um, but yeah, you are right. You're not always going to get it right. But my choices at the moment are to just ho hold on because my mine mining obviously is not paying me anything at all at the minute. Um, that's come to a complete halt. I have no mining equipment here. Um, so what are my choices? Either just stay with the same amount of Bitcoin I have today and hope that Bitcoin goes up in price at some point. Or I'll try and do a bit of swing trading and try and hopefully increase the amount of Bitcoin that I had. The only way I'm going to really lose out big is if obviously I cash out into British pounds and all of a sudden Bitcoin just shoots up uh, within sort of an hour, half a day um, to like double the price. Then obviously I'm going to um, only be able to buy half the amount of Bitcoin. But um, that's, that's the risk you take, I suppose. But then there's literally, I keep saying this, there is no one foolproof way of doing things otherwise that is what everyone would be doing there is no there's nothing out there where you could say oh yeah that's the best way to do it unless there is please tell me if you can tell me how i can accumulate one whole bitcoin in the fastest cheapest way possible please let me know um BBL says, oh man, you got more of the crypto cave done. Nice. Yes. So <laughs> I actually came out here the other day when it was absolutely boiling hot. And uh, I actually managed to plasterboard the rest of the ceiling. I had to get someone to give me a hand and I plasterboarded half there. Um, so I need to finish off the rest now. Um, I actually run out of plasterboard screws. Um, so I had to stop yesterday. Um, but I'm sort of doing it when I get free time. So it's not saying I can just, uh, and plus I need money as well. Um, Russell says, good point, BBL. You have you have to be at a computer all the time, really. Look at the longs on Finex. 30% of those longs are with leverage. If you started mining earlier, you would be stuck now. So basically, you are a victim of market sentiment. I think you should build a 4 GPU mining rig for a little extra coinage. Mountain Dew says, fastest way is to invest in Sprint or FX. Russell says, now the Soits are at it. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, but I don't know, guys. That's that's something that um, I'm willing to take the risk on. I mean, it's uh, for me, it's not... If I was playing with like £10,000 worth, then, yeah, I'd probably be more inclined to... Um, I don't know, actually, it'd still be quite tempting. But I've got such a small amount. If I lost my £500 worth of uh, Bitcoin, um, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, to be honest. Um, obviously, that was worth 1500 at one point. Obviously, the price of Bitcoin's gone down dramatically. No, it was worth more than that. It was worth about 2500 Um So that has dropped literally like a fifth of what it was. But hopefully, obviously, if I can accumulate more Bitcoin... Um, and the price does go back up to 20k at some point that will be worth um two and a half grand again really um you think that's 12 percent of a whole bitcoin so um you know uh, bitcoin goes up to 10k that'll be worth 1200 if it went up to 20k that'd be worth 2400 I, I don't know that's that's what i think anyway um sorry shorts so I don't know. They're my thoughts. Um, so that was it, really. I was just doing a quick video today. I didn't want to do a, a really long video. But what are your guys' thoughts? Do you think that buying and selling Bitcoin on the dip or as the dip is happening? A lot of people just say, oh, yeah, just buy the dip. But what does that actually mean? Does that mean keep buying with fiat money? Like, as I've pointed out before, we've had about 19 dips this last six months. And even if you put in $100 each time someone said that, you're talking about spending $1,900 on something that is continuously going down. Um, I suppose you have to look at the long term and say, right, in the next three months, I believe it's going to be at this price or in this place. 
Um, so I'm going to give it a month or two months and buy at this point. Um, and then if you honestly believe in the next six months that it's going to go up, then yeah, hodl then. You know, I, I don't think Bitcoin's going to go up in price dramatically within the next four to six weeks. That's that's my opinion. I'm sorry if uh, uh, Mountain Dew says, yes, people like fear. Buy that to dip. <laughs> Scale in. Um, so yeah, I, I in the next four to six weeks, I will be trying to accumulate as much Bitcoin as I can with the same amount of fiat that I have. And the only way I can see doing that is obviously doing the doing the swing trading. Um, but I'm not going to be doing it on like a daily or hourly basis. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be like buying in the morning, selling midday, and then buying back in in the morning. You know, it's it's not something that uh, I want to do. I'm thinking more levels like if i cash out and then i think okay i think bitcoin's going down to 5500 um i'll wait until that happens and then then i'll buy back in hopefully it goes back up to 6k obviously i've accumulated um btc then i cash back out um, and then i'll say okay well i think it's going to go now down to 5k and then obviously again accumulate more bitcoin if i can accumulate 0 0.2 of a bitcoin that will be the most bitcoin i've ever had so if i can achieve that i only need another 0 0.0 0 0.08 of a bitcoin if i can do that in the next 6 months uh, by doing this uh, method then i'll be over the moon so what do you guys think is it saying that you've done i feel like I've earned more money in Bitcoin doing that in the last 48 to 72 hours than I have mining in the last six months. <laughs> no, probably not that long, actually. Yeah, Probably in the last three months, definitely. Um, so I don't know. Is it is it a more uh, is it a quick way to win or lose Bitcoin um, than mining? BBL says mine, mine, mine. Shit coins turned into BTC. Also four GPUs could mine a bunch of different algos i am still really interested in my i i still want to mine i really really do um i've <laughs> it's really hard without getting too personal um and i'm sure you guys probably don't want to hear my personal stuff but when you have obviously a family and certain bills going out and holidays and things that your family want. If I accumulate £500 within a month, I have to make a conscious decision, right, do I go out and spend that on more Bitcoin or mining equipment or stuff to make this shed or lighting equipment, camera, microphone? You know, I have to make that call. Now, let's say I make a call and say, well, no, actually, the kids need school uniform. Um, we need this. We need that. And uh, plus, my missus wants to go Disneyland Paris or something. If I make that call, I have to wait another month, you know, the next month before I have another lot of £500 or whatever. You know, whenever these, this, when money comes up. It's very easy for people to comment on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram saying buy the dip, buy back in. Um, Glenn, why don't you just get buy this, buy that? Why don't you upgrade your computer to this and that? People just think, oh, this guy's on YouTube, so he must be making fuck loads of money. But <laughs> I can assure you that's not the case. I'm just a normal guy like you guys. And I'm sure there's, I would like to think that there's people watching my YouTube channel who are like me and they're like yeah I can't afford to do that so Glenn what are you going to do how are you going to get around it and that's what I'm trying to come up with um, and obviously I'm sharing that with you guys that's the whole point of this channel um, to v video my diary if anyone says to me in a year's time fucking hell how did you accumulate 0 0.2 of a bitcoin because you know that's worth a million pounds now um, I can say yeah go back and watch my videos eight months ago you know <laughs> whatever that's what I'd like to think would happen um, but, you know, it's very easy. I'm not having a dig at any of you guys because I would probably do the same. You're all trying to offer advice. You're all trying to give me tips, and I get it. But, you know, it's like um, 
if I listened to every time someone sent me a message saying, Glenn, buy into this, um, you know, you'd have to have an in infinity amount of supply of money. <laughs> so I don't know. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you guys know. I've been obviously honest and upfront. I've not hidden anything from you guys. Um, PBL says, Bit Glenn GPU mining rig fund. <laughs> yes, I would do that because you donated uh, $10, which I only found out the other day I only get $7 out of. I went to my YouTube analytics and I think YouTube keep $3 of it. And I've got seven. So thank you for that, BBL. With that other donation, uh, if you're not, if you're wondering what's just happened, uh, BBL's just donated ten dollars using this new super chat feature that I've unlocked because YouTube think I'm the fucking nuts. Obviously, obviously, that's what you all think. Surely, give me a thumbs up if you do think that. Um, but yeah, you can donate money to me now. I've always stated that any money that I get from any you you know YouTube contributions, profits, anything like that will be reinvested back into making stuff to make this channel even better. So um BBL, you've just said mining GPU, that's all I'm gonna spend that money on. Any money anyone donates to me will only be spent on uh GPU mining. Uh so thank you very much for that. I really appreciate BBL. Um that's awesome. If you actually want to donate ten dollars to me, uh probably in a better way where I actually receive ten dollars you could probably uh, just send me Litecoin because that's probably one of the cheapest ways of doing it this is my Exodus wallet the only thing I've kept in here is my Ethereum and my uh, Ethos I'm waiting for the app to come out and I just thought oh, I'll keep a small bit in there just in case it goes 100x or something uh, when the app comes out so um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing, guys. I thought I'd let you know. Like I say, I've been upfront and honest. So uh, let's all make a me let's all make a snapshot in your mind. Look at these figures. Bitglen, as of the end of June, beginning of July. So let's just say summertime. Summertime, Glenn had twelve and a half percent of a Bitcoin. Yeah, so 12.5% of a Bitcoin. Let's see if between me and obviously with the help of you guys, if I can accumulate more than 12% of a Bitcoin. So what I mean by that, I don't mean give me money. Um, I mean, you know, in the Telegram group chat, people often comment and say, Glenn, have you seen Bitcoin's gone down to this price? That prompts me to check it. And maybe it prompts me to do something about it, buy or sell or whatever. Uh, I know, obviously, uh, PJ, Russell, BBL, obviously, uh, and Fred, you always comment saying, oh, have you seen this news and stuff like that. All these things help me, and I hope that helps other people as well, because it gives me prompts to think, oh, yeah, that is going to go up in price. I'm almost done with pretty much altcoins in general. Um, obviously, I'm pretty much done in cloud mining, full stop. Obviously, I would like to mine... Hardware wise, I wish I'd gone down that route from the beginning. My channel probably would be uh, more successful and more popular and I would have learned a lot more by now. I would have had six months worth of mining under my belt. So I really do wish that I'd gone down that route. But never mind. We've got to deal with it. <laughs> Just to give you guys a heads up actually, my, um, my YouTube channel's uh, suffering quite bad actually. Um, and I, I, I've always said because obviously the, um, what's its face, uh, Envian and Hashflare going down at the same time, uh, or being unprofitable at the same time, um, my subscriber base is dropping dramatically. So now I'm minus 18 subscribers this month alone. Um, you can see there that I'm down to 1151. My estimated revenue for the whole month is $9. Um, so. I don't know. That's that would be my very first uh, pat. It probably would have been a lot higher than that if I was monetized uh, <laughs> ages ago. Um, but never mind. That's what it is now. I'm going to try and accumulate, obviously, more mining equipment and obviously swing trading. So let's hope that pays off for me and I hope it pays off for you. If you do that, this is not financial advice. Thank you for joining me, guys. Thanks for joining this episode of uh, Team Bitcoin. Before you go, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Um, 
It might be worth looking into the GMO miner. Yes, I have kept my ear, uh, you know, eye on those. Um, I know that they announced Hank on their Twitter a little while back, um, but I haven't really seen any like evidence that they're out there in the wild and that they exist just yet. Um, what will be the killer, I think anyway, is Samson. If Samson can release one, whew, especially if it's good. <laughs> um, Surely everyone would go to Samson. But anyway, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. A bit, Glenn. I'll probably do one uh, over the weekend. Hopefully, I can take advantage of some more dip. Uh, I'm expecting Bitcoin to sort of dip back down Sunday, sort of around to 5, 7, 50, maybe a bit lower. So hopefully, um, that is their partner. Is it? I thought GMO were making their own ones and Samsung were going to make their own ones, but I may be wrong with that. But then Samsung make iPhones and they still make their own phones, I suppose. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you over the weekend. And uh, don't forget to join the Team BitGlen group chat and the Telegram. And also give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to this channel. See you later, guys. Bye.